Hey everybody, David Really here. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Color XMLs along Takeru Sasazuka's route. Soda is on the run at the moment, so we've got to recapture him. That's what we're working on at the moment. So you can just sit back, relax, and let me read you a story. Speaking of which, the reports mentioned that the bullying didn't stay confined to the game. Once ill will was bred in the online world, it's only a few clicks before lies and rumors are posted all over social media and the forums. Unfortunately, once something gets posted online, it's there almost indefinitely. One mistake could ruin lives. Even if they change their name or location, they continue to be stigmatized. There were even cases where people's addresses were discovered, and they'd been harassed into suicide. To Soda, it was a living hell. He wasn't at fault, but someone's malice wrecked his world. But to recreate that... I didn't want to empathize, but still... Huh. <sighs> we must trap Soda. You're going to trap Soda? That's right. I've asked the developer to cooperate with our operation by creating a bug in a limited area. Are we still going to traumatize him then? After that, I'll take over. I previously made a character who's already a member of Shogo's guild. See? This Takeru is me. Real original name there. I look at the screen Sasazuka shows me, and I see a post from Takeru. Like other posters, they posted to say they're overjoyed at the revival of Shogo. They're going to cause the bug to occur in a limited spot, when the users are most active. From there, they'll lead on the guild members. And they'll see their god as a traitor. Yeah, and that'll be the end of him. While his spirit is broken, the team swoops in to arrest him. Then I'll interrogate him. Uh, but he's gonna be like... But he could be catatonic after that happens to him again. When he's in a weakened state, and he learns the one interrogating him also trapped him, I might be able to get something new out of him. Oh yeah, I guess if he learns that he's talking to the one who trapped him. That'll set him off. <sighs> so Sasaka stated it plainly. But I knew what he was trying to plan. But I was reluctant to simply accept it without sp speaking up. Isn't that a bit too cruel? If you already know where he is, can't you just immediately arrest him? I'm doing this because that would be pointless. Listen, I told you before, show no sympathy. Our top priority is to solve the incident. To do that, we must gauge the perpetrator's mental state and take advantage of that. That's my way. <sighs> For people who committed crimes because they were hurt, hurting them more was cruel. But Soda had continued to commit more crimes. He murdered people. He stayed silent while he was in prison. Even if he was arrested again, it would certainly be the same. I understand. Yeah, it might be the only way they can get him to talk. So Sasaka was a pragmatist about everything, and this method was very like him. I thought he was going overboard, but as someone who had never done a full investigation, I was unqualified to state my opinion. You're so easy to read. It's obvious that you're not satisfied. But that's not true. It's fine. I know this is forceful, but I'm doing it because it's necessary. I hope you can understand that if nothing else. Yes. Alright, then eat this. We'll get busy after this. Ah, oh, another treat. I took the donut that he was offering and then replied. I won't say any more. That's the spirit, Pooch. I'm not a dog! <laughs> there you go again. Ugh. I couldn't help it. So I sighed at myself while I bit into the donut. Well, no. Does she like it better being called a dog or a cat? <laughs> December 15th, 7.53 p.m. <laughs> I'm so hardcore. I'll be the top-ranked player in no time. Yeah, yeah. Worship me more. Worship me as your god. Many compliments cheering on god are repeated on the screen. This is my world. This is the real world. It's just as I said. Without your god, the event is worthless. This was the world where I became the strongest hero. The more the weak I saved, the more they depended on me. I didn't care how much I put into this. I'd help you as much as I could. Don't worry. I'll help all of you. Oh. 
as SOS calls me from one after another. I answered all of them as I looked at my watch. Almost there. Only a little more and the event mission will begin. Yeehaw! Time for a party! Not a happy one, unfortunately for you. It's almost time. Minagishi, are you ready? We're all clear here. We're ready to rush at any time. All right. Sasazaka, is there anything I can do? Cheer me on. G good luck. I keep telling you not to take things seriously. Whatever, just shut up and watch. Come on, you said cheer you on. You said it yourself. The preparations are complete. Sasazaka seemed to be enjoying this. The investigators still at HQ. Those people were mostly part of cyber crimes and were fired up, waiting for orders from Sasazaka. The mission will commence in three minutes. We'll cooperate with the devs and crush him. Sasazaka stares at his cell phone. Three minutes later, everyone was holding their breaths, waiting in anticipation for the clock. Two more minutes. Thirty more seconds. Fifteen seconds. And then... Bug confirmed. No effect detected, except for on the player Shogo. Now then, let's begin. Here we go. Let's see how you deal with this, Shogo. What's this? Why can't I move? Once the mission started, for some reason my character, and only my character, was stuck in place. I'm the DPS here, but I can't move, and all my guildmates are getting wrecked. Wait, 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 wait! No, I'm not just letting you die. I can't move. Damn it, what is this? Do we just have to log in again? I got nervous since this time was crucial in missions. I had to do something about this situation, or this was going to get bad quick. Why can't I move? What the hell? Damn it! Is this another bug? What about the other members? I quickly look into the forums. Ugh. Umi. God, did you fall? Leo. Call for a rescue. God's descent is delayed. Ame. God isn't moving at all. What's going on? In the case of God, we let die. Are the servers overloaded? No, it's probably not. Takaru is the one spurring them on, of course. No, it's probably intentional. Leo, what? Takaru, they took an item. W what? What are they talking about? I didn't take any items. Don't start with this garbage. I try to post in the forums, and my twitching fingers flick at the keyboard. But... Why? Why can't I write anything? Uh, rescue isn't coming. I can't get through to God. He's not even commenting. Crap, it's getting worse. Is he a dark god? Why the hell would I even need to take your worthless items? I already have all that stuff. What do you mean? You thought I was suspicious. I'm your god! I start. I started hyperventilating. My entire body was shaking. This world, where people worshipped me as a god, was now just filled with insults. Stop it! It's not me! I didn't do it! No, no, no! Why? Why, why? Don't screw with me! What now? This isn't the time for missions, lol. Another guild's ready. You wanna move? Please, please. I wanna go too. Die, Shogo. Ah! Ah! My world was being destroyed! All because one mission got screwed up? People turn on him awfully easily. One by one, all my guild members started abandoning the guild. Man, that'd be one really weak guild if it just took one incident for all that. I mean, maybe that part was planned too, but still. No, 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 no! I didn't do anything! Stop! Ah! Are they swooping in on them now? It's over. Minagishi, all green. Roger that. Minagishi quickly called on the radio. Prepare to breach and secure. With those words, everyone here exhaled. Completely surrounded, Soda will have nowhere to go, and will be arrested immediately. Good work, Sasazaka. It was okay. Hey, I praised you. Maybe I should give him a treat. 
That was some fine work. Thanks. But word from the radio put a damper on the joy at HQ. Oh? Commissioner Minigishi, the suspect is carrying a firearm. In that next instant, we focused on Minigishi. What's the situation? We surrounded him, but the suspect put the gun to his head. We can't get any closer. We're trying to negotiate, but the suspect just keeps saying, Bring that woman here. That woman? Yeah, he's only dealt with one woman, I believe. He's saying that woman that trapped me. He must mean the woman that lent him the phone. How did I trap him? Uh, that's... He must have thought you did something because you kept his ID. Minigishi, what are you going to do? I can't have him committing suicide. We need him to confess everything. In that case, there's only one play. So Sasaka said that and then looked at me. I nodded in return. I'll go. Can't we shoot him with a tranquilizer dart? I'm going to. You're the bait. I'll let him know that I'm the main man. It's too dangerous. I'm prepared for that. Just give us, you know, some bulletproof vests. We'll be good. Minigishi stared at Sasazuka, then sighed, as if he'd given up. Very well. Please take all the necessary precautions, and don't do anything rash. Understood. Let's go. Wow, we're going out into the field together for the first time. We turned to each other and put our coats on before we left HQ. I totally never expected to actually go out and go on a mission with Sasazuka. December 15th, 907. That was pretty much going to be confined to the computer most of the time. Commissioner! We're Soda. We're continuing the negotiation, but he's gone delirious and refuses to listen. He leaves me no choice. Hoshino, you have your firearm, correct? Yes. Soda is in a deranged state of mind. Do not provoke him. However, if you see any danger to your person, you are cleared to fire at will. Yes, sir. <laughs> Sasazuka, that goes for you, too. Keep this gun on you. Minagishi held out a handgun. Sasazuka glanced at it and shook his head. Not his thing. Don't need it. But it doesn't suit me. Besides, it'll all end before it's my turn. Sasazuka, are you all right? I said I don't need it. Possibly because he was about to confront Soda, Sasazuka appeared to be on edge. I understand. Then we'll set up defenses behind you. Be careful out there. We nod in response and head to the alleyway where Soda is. Making a crazy face again? I said, get that woman over here! You're all useless. Get that woman who trapped me here now! Calm down and listen to us. Just put the gun down first. Shut up! Come any closer and I'll off myself! Soda is currently extremely agitated. We slipped past the field operations members blockading the front side and proceeded down the narrow alleyway. Ichika. Yes? You only need to come out in the beginning. Once I clear up Soda's misconception, get back. I can't do that. Shut up and listen to me. I'm your partner. I'll be by your side no matter what. Why are you so stubborn in these moments? You're not going to change my mind. I'm not just stubborn in these moments. I'm stubborn all the time. Just don't do anything stupid. Yes. I put my hand over the holster under my right arm and mentally readied myself to fire. No matter what, be prepared to shoot. I stood in front while thinking that. When Soda saw me, he screamed. You! You messed with my ID, didn't you? Yeah, you did. I'll kill you! The moment he turned the gun on me, I felt my entire body get goosebumps. Stay calm. I focused on breathing slow breaths as I carefully observed Soda. Perhaps because he was in such an excited state, his hands were shaking. Even if he fired in that condition, the odds of him hitting his target were low. Soda. What? I'm not hearing any of your excuses. 
You ruined everything. Listen to me. You called me a Stone Age girl, didn't you? I don't know how to play our games. This is all a misunderstanding. Shut up! You tricked me! No, I really didn't. Then, then who did it? Bring me whoever trapped me. I'll kill whoever it is. Don't make your situation any worse. Please, just throw down your gun. Dumbass, none of that matters anymore. I'll kill the guy who destroyed my world, and then I'll kill myself. Soda. Sasasaka grabbed my shoulder and pulled me back before stepping forward. In that brief moment, he looked me in the eye to tell me to stay back. Who are you? You said you wanted to know who the guy that trapped you was, right? Ugh. It's me. I'm the one you want to kill. Huh? Soda made a blank stare. Did you check out the forum? I'm the one with the handle Takeru. I mentioned being left for dead by God. You see how that one post changed the flow? Uh, you! You're the... It's so easy to manipulate faceless people online. I bug out your character and just gave everyone the slightest bit of encouragement. And they turned on you in an instant. Oh yeah, it's the second time for you. You probably know more than I do about that. Gah! He's taking this too far. Soda points the muzzle at Sasazuka. I got cold sweats as I wondered when the right moment to draw my weapon would be. It's you. You did it. Yeah, I did. How'd you like it? You worked so hard and spent so much just to be called a god. You're the same no matter where you go. Just the slightest little nudge and your world comes tumbling down. That's all you're worth in the end. Once they saw that you were useless for a moment, your guild members started abandoning you. Sh shut up! You, you don't know me! You can't do anything in real life, you trash. Stop calling yourself a god. Sh shut up! I'll say it as many times as I have to. You're not a god. You're just a helpless, hopeless little kid. Shut up! When Soda shouted, I drew my firearm from my holster. That was a split-second decision. Oh, I guess I gotta hit him. Knock the gun out of his hand. Actually, let me miss that shot first and see if I get a bad ending. And then we'll do it right. <laughs> Alright, let's miss it. Sasasaka! Ichika! I had pushed Sasasaka out of the way, dropped into my shooting stance, and drew a bead. <laughs> Soda's shooting hand was freshly stained a crimson hue. My shot was true. No, charge him. The investigators were waiting in the back and rushed to neutralize Soda. And I... Ichika, Ichika, are you alright? Sasazaka? I feel weak in the knees. I... I can't. A bright red heat fills my chest and I collapsed. Hey, you idiot. Don't die on me. Ichika. I'm sorry. In that instant, I made a choice to protect instead of shoot. I thought I wouldn't make it in time. Flame erupted from the muzzle of the gun aimed at Sasazaka first. So... <laughs> Please... Don't cry. I'm glad I protected you. That was the last thought I ever had. Alright, so that was one easily branching ending. Now let's get back on track. I like it when they're nice, short, easy ones like that and they're not too emotional. <laughs> bullet I fired pierced Soda's hand. Fresh blood oozed out as I held my stance and my aim. In the next instant... Capture him. Minagishi yelled out the order, and all the investigators on standby rushed to Soda. I managed to shoot. 
My arms felt stiff from the tension. I put them down and I took a deep breath. Soda had aimed at Sasazaka. If I had taken even a moment longer to act, Sasazaka would have been shot. That's why I shot first, from behind Sasazaka's shoulder. I'm so glad. It was a dangerous gamble. If my aim was lacking, or if Sasazaka had moved, even a step away, the result would have been much different. The smell of spent gunpowder filled the air as I returned the gun to the holster with my hand tingling. Watching you two scared me. I'm sorry. What's wrong, Takeru? No, I'm glad you two were safe. Soda is arrested and... Sasazaka, are you all right? <sighs> Sasazaka? Commissioner, the suspect has been transported. Ah, uh, thank you. You'll have to excuse me here. I must leave. Oh, yes. Thank you. I said goodbye to Minigishi and the others, and I turned my attention to Sasazaka. Are you upset because of the gun usage? Um, are you all right? Sasazaka was as pale as a ghost. When I moved closer to him, he shifted his body weight. Huh? Sasazaka? Oh. He began to fall forward, and I quickly held him up. Okay, I'd say he has a full-on phobia. Sasazaka's body was convulsing. Sasazaka! Sasazaka! Are you alright? You... You're alive, right? Huh? I felt his arm tightly wrap itself around my body. Ow! You're alive, right? You didn't get shot anywhere, right? I... I'm fine. I wasn't shot. What's the matter with you? You're shaking, Sasazaka. Uh, I thought I was going to lose you again. Again? Huh? Don't die on me. Please. Damn it. I can't. Sasazaka! Guns. I can't. Sasaka! His body went limp, and his weight fell on me. It seemed like he lost consciousness. I tried to see if anything was wrong with him physically, but aside from being unconscious, there's nothing I can immediately see. What's going on? PTSD. I couldn't believe that Sasazaka was sitting here, shaking like a small child. It took a lot of effort trying to help him up. Exhausted, I quickly took my cell phone out of my pocket. Hello, it's me, Hoshino. Would you please come to Kabukicho immediately? Sasazaka suddenly collapsed. I sought help from Yanagi, and he agreed to meet me here immediately. Sasazaka. His face was pale as death, and it sent uneasy chills down my spine. Chapter 5 December 15th, 11.49pm After I exited the room, I was immediately greeted by the sight of Yanagi, wearing a worried look on his face. How's the Sazuka? Has he calmed down yet? Yes, maybe. He's sleeping soundly now. Yanagi, thank you so much. I wouldn't have been able to handle that alone. Don't worry about it. But as a precaution, can you watch over him until he wakes up? Yes, I've already contacted my brother, and besides, I'm worried too. Yanagi, do you have something to tend to? Yes, I would have stayed with him personally instead of asking you. Please, just leave it to me. I'm Sasazaka's partner, you know. Yanagi smiled at me. Huh? What is it? Nothing. Just remembering when I first told you I didn't recommend partnering with Sasazaka. And it ended up working out somehow anyway. <laughs> you did say that. But I don't regret it one bit. After following the August incident, I'm glad that I chose to investigate with Sasazaka. I'm sorry for causing you so much worry, Yanagi. Don't you worry about me. Well, I'll leave Sasazaka in your care now. Call me if anything happens. Yes, thank you. After saying that, Yanagi left the office. 
I really wanted to know what was the matter. I received help from Yanagi after calling him, and we brought Sasazuka back to the office. We didn't find anything abnormal aside from him losing consciousness, so we decided to just let him rest for the time being. Doesn't Yanagi know something? I'll check him off. I'll check on him often. And be here to take him to the hospital should anything happen. I only knew Sasazuka as an arrogant, supremely confident person, so seeing him collapse was a pretty big shock. And I'll probably be really embarrassed about it. I, I thought I'd lose you in front of my eyes again. Huh? Don't die. Please. While shaking, Sasazuka clung on to me with a death grip. Lose? What is he talking about? I had no idea what it could be. I wonder if he'll tell me after he wakes up. He probably wouldn't wake up for a while, though. It'd be better if he had something to eat when he did wake up. I decided to head to a convenience store near the office. No, you should stay by his side. I wouldn't leave him. I bought him some drinks and a light meal and returned to the office to find Sasazuka was still sound asleep. Well, that's good at least. What should I do? With nothing to do but wait, I turned on the TV and kept the volume low. The late night news was reporting on the Metropolitan Office bombing and the escape and recapture of Soda. The bombing claimed three victims. I'm surprised it didn't claim more. All of them were situated in an important post of the Board of Education and Ministry of Education. I wonder if Sarah really did that. Just the thought of that made me feel down. No matter how suspicious he was, part of me wanted all of this not to be true. But if I were to say this, Sasazuka would just sound naive. Huh? I heard a sound in the back room. I wonder if Sasazuka had somehow woken up already. Quickly, I stood up from my seat and headed to the room in the back. More soda. But Sasazuka came out before I made it there. That's the first thing he asks? He's been arrested and he's in police custody. It's fine now. Never mind that. Are you okay, Sasazuka? I slept more than enough. I know that, but... Did you bring me back here? It was impossible for me to carry you back alone, so I had Yanagi help. I see. He mumbled that he'd have to thank him later. I tried to get Sasazuka to come to the sofa. I have some drinks and I got you a light meal. Would you like some? I'll take something to drink. Sure. He just woke up, so he's still a bit groggy. Huh? I handed him a drink and then reached out a hand toward his forehead. What? I guess I'm checking for a fever. Don't be so freaked out. Nothing. I just wanted to see if you had a fever. I don't. Don't touch me right now. Uh, alright. But you're so cute when you blush. <laughs> All the guys are always so cute when they blush. The room was silent except for the faint din of the TV. I continued to stare at Sasazuka. Sasazuka, on the other hand, refused to look either at me or the TV. He wasn't looking anywhere in particular. Get it together, man. This is awkward. You can stop staring at me now. I'm sorry. I'm just worried. I'm fine. I'll apologize for causing you trouble. It's no trouble at all. Can you please forget about all this? That's not going to be possible. I knew you'd say that. Sasazuka looked at me, annoyed. Defeated, he sighed and stood up. Is it story time? Sasazuka? I'm going to the roof to get some fresh air. You need some cold air? Huh? You shouldn't. What if you catch a cold? I'll be fine. Being alone here with you is suffocating. But... It's not something I like talking about. That last line meant he intended to tell me his circumstances. My eyes widened at that response. Let's go. Sasasaka so made to leave, so I quickly followed after him. Please, wait. At least put on your coat. It's pretty cold outside. Mm. Sasasaka so seemed more meek than usual. He put his coat on his shoulders and exited. 
What is it with these guys not wanting to put their arms in their sleeves? 1216. I can't deal with guns. As soon as we were on the roof, he let it out. I don't want to admit it, but it's similar to PTSD. I don't even want to look at them. I don't like it when someone's carrying one. Of course, I don't carry one myself. I locked away they want assigned to citizens. But... I didn't think it would be enough to make me pass out. I didn't know whether I should hear this. But nothing would move forward unless I did. While still hesitant, I asked, What is this trauma? Did you have a bad gun-related incident? Sasaka nodded and answered, My mother was shot and killed. Shot right in front of my eyes, protecting me. Uh, but... This was completely unexpected. I took a deep breath. It's not an uncommon thing in America. Some young gangsters carry guns for fun. My mother and I were dragged into a mess. We were shopping during vacation and were unlucky. So Sasaka looks up at the dark sky. I can't forget that day. It's been six years. I was 18 at the time. Wow, I would have thought he was a kid back then. It was a completely ordinary sunny day. My mother was excited about the trip. And I walked with her, even though I wasn't thrilled about it. With the shopping bags in both hands, we were about to call for a taxi. Suddenly, we heard gunshots. The people in the street started shouting, and I told my mother to look out. I thought it would be dangerous to be outside so we went back into the mall to get an idea of how it would all play out. I grabbed my mother by her arm and began running. I kept telling her it was all right. But that decision was the wrong one. Someone jumped out of the alley in front of us, and he had a gun. We ran into each other and our eyes met, so he aimed the gun at me. I was stunned and couldn't move. Suddenly I was pushed from the side. At the same time, I heard a gunshot. When I came to, my mother was on the ground, bloody. I didn't know what happened. The guy who shot her ran off. I called my mother's name over and over again. She was bleeding from the mouth, but she still smiled at me. She said, Thank goodness. She said that she was happy I was safe. And then my mother passed away. I kept calling her name, but she wouldn't wake up. By the time I realized it, a crowd had formed, and the sirens from the police cars were blaring. They told us that we were unlucky, not like that helped at all. After a bit, the suspect was caught. He was a Japanese-American and a minor. Some too-big gang had started a turf war. My mother's murderer had a strong backer, so the judge went easy on his sentencing. I'm sure he's probably roaming free somewhere right this moment. But I will never forget. Never. The sound of that shot and my mother's last words. The pool of red on the ground. It haunts me in my dreams. That's where my trauma comes from. He spoke clinically, detached, as if it didn't happen to him making it sound even more painful. I do you remember what I said before, that there's someone I want to kill? Yes. I actually did try to kill him. I knew the date he was being released and really did plan to murder him. But I couldn't. The syndicate he was part of had very strong security, and an amateur like me couldn't even get close. I managed to track him, but cracking isn't enough to plumb the depths of the deeper parts of the criminal underworld. <sighs> Do you understand? That's why I didn't follow through. I wanted to kill him, but I didn't have a chance. If my mother's killer was right in front of me, I'd want to kill him. So Sasaka said that with a sarcastic smile. I hate guns, and the society that permits guns. That's the reason I returned to Japan. With the Swords and Firearms Control Act, I wouldn't ever have to deal with that. And yet, 
look at where we've ended up. The reason I joined the police was because the public started debating the abolition of the Swords and Firearms Control Law. Instead of letting that happen, I figured I'd just root out the criminals before they could commit any heinous crimes. That's why I joined the force. But I never expected the Swords and Firearms Control Law would get abolished within the course of a year. If what I wanted to protect was broken, then I figured it didn't make much sense to stay within the system, so I quit. That's why I have no justice on my side. I entered and quit the police entirely due to my own selfish motivations. I said all those things to you, and I'm just a selfish guy deep down. Are you disgusted with me? Of course not. I managed to shake my head. I... I would never be. Ever. Okay. You're an idiot, huh? An ultra idiot. I don't care if I'm an idiot. Besides, Sasazuka, you're many times worse. Huh? You tried to protect me. <sighs> you jumped in front of someone with a gun, and then you deliberately instigated him. I think you're taunting him too much. If your goal was to divert Soda's attention away from me, it would at least explain things. You're full of yourself. That's fine, but... Sasazuka looks straight at me. I... Won't apologize. Can't I say both? I won't thank you, nor will I apologize. I won't apologize. Even though I didn't know, I pulled out a gun right in front of you. <sighs> it wasn't a mistake to take the shot. Had I not done that, then you would have gotten shot. That's... In that situation, you were obviously taunting Soda way too much. I know that was to divert his attention away from me. Nope. It's not that I'm not happy that you tried to protect me, but I didn't want to see you get shot in front of my eyes either. That was an error of judgment. As your partner, I have to denounce that decision. I remained steadfast in my opinion. An annoyed look started to creep into Sasazuka's face, and he looked away. He was acting far too erratically to be able to aim well. I figured that I could at least take one hit without dying. You're being far too reckless! Shut up. All's well that ends well. So what do you care? I won't apologize. I won't either. But you should. <laughs> Shut up. Don't get carried away. Well, I'm not gonna apologize. But I will express my thanks. Ah, good enough. <sighs> Isn't that enough? There won't be a next time. <sighs> Answer me! Fine, I get it. Jeez. Sasasaka remained as stubborn as ever, so I simply sighed. Oh, you're one to talk. You're both stubborn as hell. That's why you make a good couple. But that's that. There's no need for me to carry a gun. I honestly don't want you to be carrying one either, but I'll just ignore that for now. Well, I'm actually trained to use a gun, though. That's different. And I'm a police officer. I don't just go use my willy-nilly for no reason. Well, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and stop that video here. I think that's pretty much the end of our conversation, but if there's anything left, we'll find out more in the next episode. So I hope to see you there or in some of my other videos. And I'd be so grateful for any likes, comments, subscriptions, or shares with your friends to show some support. Thank you so much for joining me, and I wish you all health, happiness, and safety. Do really signing out. Bye-bye, everybody.